Good evening. In show business, getting laughs is the supreme test. And this evening, I have been discussing the art of comedy with a gentleman who has made a deep study of humor, Mr. Kenneth Connor. Thank you very much, Mr. Dawson. Earlier, Mr. Connor and I had agreed on the fundamental per principle. Well, perhaps you'd care to elaborate on it, Mr. Connor. If you wish, most certainly I will. Yes. Now, my contention is that true comedy must come from the heart. From the soul, yes, if you I, will. yes, I see this. Yes, you see, and to get down to the real essence of comedy, what it is that makes people like you out there and us laugh, I think it's necessary to dig back into the roots, for the roots in in history, yes. back to the time uh, of the ancient Greeks, to the old Dionysiac festivals, and to Aristophanes. <laughs> now, you see, as I've already said, true comedy, coming as it does from within, yes. has nothing at all to do with the cheapskate methods for getting laughs employed nowadays, such as <laughs> slipping up on banana skins and, and falling into rivers and How things like that. How pedestrian, yeah. yes. <laughs> yes. I agree with you, one has to dig back into history to really find the very roots of comedy. Yes, I, I agree with you there. But another condition of mine is the true humor is always somewhat quintessentially, basically intellectual. Yes. You understand what yes. I mean? Yes. By this, I mean we do need, in our comedy, the short, sharp crackle of an Oscar Wilde epigram. Very true, very yes. true. We need the gloss of a goldsmith. Yes, I see this. And above all, we need the subtle satire of a swift. <laughs> yes, but quite so, you see. I'm in complete agreement, but wouldn't you say that basically most of this is an entirely visual affair? <laughs> well, I mean, you can sort of jolly comedy along, you know. You can jolly comedy along with, with uh, gimmicks, you know, with, with, with cheap dialogue and, and small-time catchphrases. Yes, but this, to me, yes. is the work of the cheap raconteur. Right. You understand yes, what I mean? I do understand. You get this sort of thing. <laughs> what can I say? You get it more from your... From your end of the pier comic, you understand? I do. <laughs> yes, I And I, also, I, you get it in Excel. In Excel is from your working man's club entertainment. <laughs> well, it's, it's a sweeping generalization that I can't entirely agree with. <laughs> After all, there are certain audience psychological reactions that one must uh, consider. I, I know, but listen, please. <laughs> what, what I am getting down to here is the real Greek reasoning, you see. In the ancient Greeks, your true, your, your modern comic, as it were, is no more, and I repeat this, your yeah. modern comic is no more your true comedian in the Greek sense yes, than see. pranksters, ordinary pranksters like uh, who have we got now? We have uh, Till Eulenspiegel. First class example. We have uh, Jonathan Routh. Yes. And uh, one whose name escapes me. Ah, Les Dawson. <laughs> yes, this is very true, but. <laughs> In the debunking of pomposity, <laughs> there are many methods used which I consider crude. Quite so. <laughs> and I think at all times this practice is abhorrent. <laughs> and it should be avoided. Right, uh, but I'm sure you will agree with me, Mr. Dawson, on the point which I am now going to make. I think, <laughs> you see, that I believe that, that subtle humor, subtle humor is the most polished that we have, and therefore is the style of humor most sought after by your modern status whatsoever, I think, are searching for that sort of thing. Oh, I agree. Subtlety is the embryonic existence of humour. When one takes, for instance, a comedy by an old cow... Ah, oh, good old Noel, yes, yes. The barbed shafts of wit are so vitriolic 
that embellishment is no longer necessary. I thoroughly agree with and you. And custard pies and that sort of thing is quite unnecessary. Right, sir. That is a truth. <laughs> but you see, Mr. Dawson. We need a climax, Mr. Dawson. Quite. Uh, have you a match, please? Uh, yes, I do have a match, yeah. <laughs> yes, it's all very well to talk in terms of the broad outline of comedy, Mr. Connor. But remember, one still has to do it. Right. Now, I would like to say to you the euphemistic phrase in show business, how does one get off? Ah, how does one get off? There we are up there, doing our job on the stage. And it is the heart cry of the true professional. How do we get off? And there we employ the great element of, of comedy, the element of surprise. <laughs> yes, well, it's, uh, it's been very nice to be on your now show, please, Mr. Mr. Dawson. <laughs> but don't run away and don't be shy. After all, this is not my show, this is yours. What would I want with a show like this? <laughs> Don't be shy, because I've come all the way up from London to see you. I'm very thankful that you've invited me on your show. I'd like to thank you sincerely, and our director, this wonderful audience present here this evening, I would like to thank. I would like to thank the gentleman who fixed all these props for me. I'd like to thank the man doing the epilogue who's dead on the floor next door. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> By some strange chance, I brought another box with me. <laughs> and I'd like to thank, most of all, that great unseen audience, the faceless one sitting down at home, watching us up on television. And I hope that they at home and you here in the studio have managed to get as much out of this academic discussion on the art of comedy as I have managed to get, and as I am sure Mr. Dawson is about to get. 